Michelle here. Welcome to the Traveling Epicurean. I'm back at Dana's. Hi everyone. You probably remember her from Spanakopita about a month ago when we made those really delicious spinach and feta little triangles. So good. Really good. You can click on the link up here to check that out if you haven't seen it already. So today, Dana is going to share with us her favorite sticky bun recipe out of this world, soft and chewy dough with a pecan caramel-like topping, right? Totally. And then we're going to show you how to do a cream cheese glaze on that also. Good. So why don't we show everybody what we're going to need for ingredients to start this. Okay. Okay, Dana, tell us what you got here for ingredients. We have three eggs. Okay. Three quarter cup of buttermilk. Ooh, I like that. Two and a quarter teaspoons of active or instant yeast. Okay. It comes in a jar as well, so if you choose to buy a jar, that's your choice. Or you can just get one packet. Or right? use one packet and okay. you'll be fine. A quarter cup of sugar, two cups of flour. It's actually four cups, but I just have another two cups to the side right now. Okay. And six tablespoons of melted cooled butter. And a teaspoon and a quarter of salt. Okay, so we're putting our three eggs in. We're just going to whisk them around briefly. Okay. Get them stirred up. Then we're going to add our yeast. And you know, I like to add the sugar next because yeast feeds yeah, all the sugar. Yeah, it does. So we'll throw our sugar okay. and our buttermilk and let it mix up so it's well combined and that That's, yeast isn't clumpy. That smells so delicious. I love the smell of yeast. It reminds me of bacon. Really? You smell the yeast? Yeah, I don't know if I love the smell of yeast. I do. I love that smell. It's wonderful. So after I got the eggs combined with the milk, yeast, and sugar, okay. I changed the attachment out to the paddle attachment gotcha. so I could mix in the flour. Okay. So now we're going to combine this okay. and shoot flour on the camera <laughs> and okay. everywhere else. It'll make us look like we're working hard. <laughs> now we're going to add the rest of the flour, which is another two cups. Okay. And the recipe does call for two and a quarter cups. A quarter cup is left aside for when we roll out the dough. Yeah, so total, we're putting four cups in. Two total cups. into the dough is four cups. Exactly. And now we're going to mix it. Oh, the salt. I, the for, I forgot too. about that salt. Okay, yep. that's okay. And we add the butter. The butter. Can't forget the butter. Butter makes everything better. It does. And remember <laughs> that your eggs and your buttermilk should be at room temperature when you're making this dough. Yeah. Okay, this is going to mix for five minutes on medium speed. Okay. So our five minutes is up, and this is how your dough should look. It's not pretty. So we just keep kneading it, and then bring it to a ball. And then we're going to spray the ball over there? Yes, we are. And we're going to put it in its little home and stick it in the oven to proof. Awesome. I can't or a move. warm spot. Not everybody has a proofing. A proofing oven. Yeah, that's yeah. a really nice feature that you have on that. It is. It's nice. I wish I had that. I do this just because I bring it together. You don't have to. It's just... Yeah, but it makes it... Make a pizza Beautiful ball there. That's gorgeous. All right. And then you're going to spray the top of that too, right? Give it a little pat. It feels so nice. It does. It looks beautiful. And then we're going to cover it with saran. Plastic, whatever you want to call it. And it's ready to proof for two hours to two and a half hours. All right, <laughs> so now we are making our topping for the sticky buns. Okay. It's going on the bottom of the pan, but it becomes topping because you flip, you them, flip over them over when they right? come out. Okay. We have six tablespoons of butter. Okay. And we're going to all put it in a saucepan on medium heat and get it all melted in together. Okay. We have three quarters cup of brown sugar packed as you can see. Yeah. So now we have our butter, brown sugar, and the honey. A, a third a cup of honey and three quarter cup of heavy cream. Ooh, I like that. And the heavy cream will probably keep it a little softer so the, it's not as caramelized. Yeah. Sticking to your teeth. Sticking to your teeth kind because of. Because it can be a problem. Yes, it can be a problem. And we're just going to let it melt and get all incorporated. So this is going to take and now you have a, time. a cup and three quarters of toasted pecans. You just toasted them lightly in the oven? I toasted them in the oven 
and just broke them up with my hands. Okay. So now that everything's melted, we bring it up to a boil. Okay. We're going to reduce the heat and cook it for four to five minutes. All right. Well, the timer just went off. It's a little <laughs> lame timer, my Santa. That's okay. So it was, we kept it at a low simmer, right, for yep. about four minutes? Yep. Okay. And it did reduce somewhat. So we're going to do two pans, one without the nuts and then one with the nuts, right? Right. A half a cup out to put with the pecans later. Okay. Because I decided I didn't really want to put the pecans in the bottom of the pan. Gotcha. Now, if this was a 13 by 9, I'd dump the whole thing in, but I'm going to put half of it. Okay, so I like how we have both pans. We'll have the sticky bottom. One's going to have the pecan topping, and then these are going to be more like a cinnamon buns. Yeah. Or Michelle cinnamon wants, buns. <laughs> Michelle wants to put cream cheese glaze icing, icing on the top icing. of that one. Yeah. See, this is the fun part. I love getting my hands into the towel. Yeah, so we might want to put some flour down first. One little flour, please. Thank you. I'm not see you. Anytime. Here's our butter. Make a little space here. Might need a little more than that. That looks beautiful. All right. Into a 16 by 18. You could go thick or thin. It's really a personal preference. All right. So I don't take out my tape measure or anything like that, but by all means, you just eyeball it. You could. So try to keep it as rectangular as you can. It's better that time. And we want to be checking the bottom to make sure that um, it's not sticking, right? Because that could be a problem if it was sticking to the bottom. Could be. <laughs> How's yours looking? It's so, looking pretty good, so actually. Nice. And it's got a lot of springs, so I think that the yeast see, is just see, being a little bit... See, notice these rolling pins. <laughs> Skinny woman, heftier woman, big pin. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's all going to taste delicious. It should be hefty, muscular. Muscular. Now, we're going to be rolling up lengthwise. That side that's going to be being rolled. Right? right? Yeah, so her... Michelle's so I'm going to turn mine turn around. around. <laughs> Swinging around a little bit. Now, most recipes will tell you to brush like a tablespoon of butter. We find it clearly isn't butter, enough. Right? It's just not enough to make everything stick. So we did a quarter of a cup and we melted it. Yeah. And we have our brushes. So we're gonna brush it on there. Michelle's she's making it big. I think she's taking over the island. <laughs> it's my island. Go away. <laughs> yeah, I like the, a little extra butter on there. Now, do I want the butter to the edges? I Because we're not going to be doing the sugar to the edges, right? Well, I don't know. I, I go. You shouldn't go to the edge so you can seal your... We need to seal it. Seal it. So I Maybe I didn't use a quarter cup, but... But you at should least have two, it, two yeah. to three tablespoons for it's sure. definitely more than a tablespoon that I've seen on some recipes. Yeah. All right. So we have a cup and a half of brown sugar. Right. And four teaspoons of cinnamon in that one, right? Right. Okay. And me, I'm just free falling. I'm just going to do my own because I know that's the way I, you roll. That's the way I roll. I'm not really a rule follower. Sometimes, but rarely. Yeah. Well, we didn't so, really grow up cooking like that by recipe, no. right? So, so I just sprinkle mine on until I think recipe. it looks good. And same with the cinnamon. I do it to eye. Just sprinkle it all over. So we sprinkle it all over, and then we're going to just smear it with our hands to yeah. smooth it out anyway. I like finger painting. And did you put cinnamon in yours? No, not yet. I put okay. it after. Oh, you're going to sprinkle it on afterwards. Yeah. Tricky. And sometimes you can squish <laughs> it into the butter so it sticks. Yeah. Oh, those cloves are behind you. Because the recipe does call for like a quarter teaspoon of cloves. And this is the cloves here? Yeah. But now that's smelling really good. That does smell too. Mm. Wow, you have a lot of cinnamon. I have a lot. So, all right. so now we're going to start to fold over the edges here. Yep. Give it a roll. A nice and roll. we want a tight roll, right? We don't want it loose. Yeah. No. We're just going to go back and forth.
All right, so I'm gonna cut mine in half. Okay. And I think we decided we were gonna make four. I'm gonna do eight we'll out do, of mine. We'll do four less, right? right I'm and taking this one off. off the end. I'm cutting my end off. Yeah. Because I want it to be a little more perfect. Okay. Now, are you gonna make these for your restaurant, Dana? Yes, definitely. For the Birdie Cafe? The Birdie Cafe at the Goodwin Golf Course in Hartford, Connecticut. That's such a cute name. Golf, Birdie. I yeah, love it's that. It's cute. So, looking forward to it. Should be open in the spring when the golf course opens. Whose looks better? No, sorry. Yours look really pretty. Although that was my dough. <laughs> yeah, was yeah. Okay, let me grab a centerpiece. So was that your dough? So next we let them sit out at room temperature or in the proofer okay. for another 40 they, minutes or till they get nice and puffy. And, and they then don't need be to ready double to in size at this point. We're no. just going to, okay. Because the... When you see how they grow in the oven, you'll be very surprised. So, well, what I wanted to say before you get going is this is my kid's favorite part is the, uh, <laughs> cream, cheese the cream cheese frosting that gets slathered on top of the cinnamon buns. Right. Any, so anybody what do we got is, here for the... Um, well, right now we have two ounces of cream cheese, Okay. a half a teaspoon of vanilla, Great. four tablespoons of butter, we're going to use a teaspoon of lemon juice and a cup and a quarter of powdered sugar. Very good. So I'm going to whoop, throw it on the counter first, <laughs> then in the Cuisinart. <laughs> It'll get there eventually. I did clean the counter. So it was clean. <laughs> I'm going to put the butter in. Okay. And then I'm going to pulse it around. I like how you're doing the food processor. Nice and easy. Yeah, it's very easy. So now we're going to add our powdered sugar. Okay. A cup and a quarter, like I said before the vanilla, and a teaspoon of lemon juice. I like the teaspoon. It kind of balances it out, this right? And a nice little tang. It does give it a nice little so tang. so much better. Even pineapple juice works, too, if you were. Ooh, that's nice. If that's you didn't have lemon juice, that would work. I love pineapple. So then you put in um, a half a tablespoon of, of corn, corn syrup. syrup. And that just helps it make it more pliable, like you See, said. See, look at it. It's nice that's and... That's gorgeous. It's perfect. It's perfect. Isn't it? All right, so we're getting these babies in the oven, right? Right. So we're going in for 30 minutes. Okay. 25 so, to 30. A 350. Yep. Hi, Dana. These are looking so pretty. They look oh, awesome. Oh, and there's the butter. There's the timer. See that? <laughs> we have them up to about so, 180. We're going to let these cool. Now we're going to take them out of the pan. Okay. And we're going to flip them over because it's the only way to really get them out of the pan. All right. Make sure you use gloves. Yep. That simple. Look at that. You ready? I'm ready. There we go. Wow, look how beautiful those look. They came out absolutely gorgeous. That's a work of art. That's definitely a work of art. We did We're a good great team. job. Okay, so we have two choices here. You can put your cream cheese frosting. Okay. So you just take some, get it on there, swirl it around. It's all a matter of how much you want. You can wait till they cool. It's going to melt, obviously, because yeah, they are so still the pretty hot. Are the hotter they are, the meltier the more it's frosting melt gets. It. Okay. Or you can take the nuts and the extra glaze we saved yeah. and sprinkle it on and add a little bit of glaze to it so Ooh, the pecans like get too. nice and coated. I like that. And it gives you a little bit of variety as well, yeah. right? Yeah. And that way the pecans stay nice and crunchy. Obviously, they're not lacking in glaze, but Absolutely. some people <laughs> love a lot of extra glaze. Yeah. So there's two different options for you. Okay. I cannot wait to have a bite of this. <laughs> I want a bite of that one too. All right. But I'm going right to the center. So good. The center is the decadent part. Mmm. It has all the deliciousness. Oh my goodness. Mmm. -mm. That's delicious. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Delicious. My kids will like this one for sure. Although I do like the nuts. I, I love that cream cheese frosting. I think that lemon is perfect in there. <laughs> This was so much fun. It was Thank a you, great Dana. day. You can find this recipe at thetravelingepicurean.com. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. See you next week. Ciao. Ciao.